Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. This episode being how to SSTO or how to build an SSTO. Now this is going to be a very basic and simple instructional video. I'm trying to keep it at a very user friendly level so that no matter who you are, you'll be able to walk away from this with well, at least hopefully, a better understanding of how to build your very own SSTO. Now really quick, I want to let you all know that I am not a professional, or at least I don't consider myself a professional SSTO builder by any means. I don't consider myself the expert. Um, I have a lot of background and knowledge and I've been doing this for a while, and I'll try to teach you what I know. But uh, if there are experts out there, the ones that have all the math in their head, that have crunched all the numbers, who know how to build SSTOs that can travel around the galaxy and back again, please do not hesitate to comment below to help those that, uh, re that want further information about the subject. Now, after watching this video, if you still have questions that the video didn't answer, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of comments below this video that will help you further understand your knowledge about how to build SSTOs. Comments that might go further or deeper into a subject, or even come up with something that um, I didn't even know myself. <laughs> Maybe I, you know, I'll, I'll probably learn something uh, as well. So. You know, ask questions, and those of you who know the answers, go ahead and try to answer them as best as possible underneath this video. So that way, if the video doesn't cover it, at least maybe the comments will. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we should ask ourselves is what is an SSTO? Um, an SSTO is, stands for Single Stage to Orbit. Basically, an SSTO is anything that can go from the surface of a planet into orbit in one piece. No stages, no dropping off fuel tanks, nothing. Just one piece. So technically, it could be a rocket. If a rocket can go up into orbit in one piece, it's considered an SSTO. Now, a lot of your SSTOs that are out there, or, or the SSTOs that you see people making, are of course space planes. Now the reason why is because space planes have a lot of advantages. Using their wings they can come back to Kerbin and glide around the atmosphere looking for a place to land. Whereas a rocket kinda has to fall where it may and maybe use some of its rockets to push it here or there but basically your landing area is small. But for a space plane, if it comes back down, it automatically turns into a plane plane or an aircraft. And therefore, you can go anywhere you want with greater range and land wherever you want. So a lot of your SSTOs that are out there are space planes. So now let's talk about drag. Now drag is an SSTO's worst enemy, whether it be a rocket or a space plane, it doesn't matter. It's its worst enemy. Drag is basically the atmosphere moving along the craft itself. As the craft pushes through the thick atmosphere, the atmosphere is of course pushing back. It's, it's dragging across the surface of the SSTO, which slows it down. And of course, if it slows it down, that means that it takes more fuel for the engine to push the craft through the thicker atmosphere. And of course the engine has to work harder, so more fuel, engine has to work harder, which of course affects the overall distance that the craft can travel before it runs out of fuel. Now don't be afraid, there are ways to combat drag. And that is to minimize the surface area with bumps and uh, obstacles and try to keep it as smooth as possible. Now if, 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 uh, you're able to build a craft that's much like this one with minimal bumps as you can see here or any other thing that that ruins the smoothness of the surface if you can build something just like this without any wings at all just a cylinder up in the space then you pretty much have minimized drag to its lowest lowest point especially especially well in game you can click this and close it you can also go over here custom one that's one on your keyboard you can click on this toggle area intake therefore now all you have to do is hit the one button on your keyboard and it'll actually toggle the intake opening it or closing it 
if the intake is closed, it minimizes drag even more. With the air intake open, of course, you have more drag. But um, you can do that when it goes back, when your rapier engine goes into rocket mode, you can close this, minimizing drag even more. Now, let's talk about wings. Now, wings in general create a lot of drag. Not a whole lot, but they do create a significant amount of drag. So if you're going to build an SSTO space plane, or even a rocket for that matter, minimize the amount of wings that the amount of wing surface area that you need. Now for heavier SSTOs, for like cargo carrying SSTOs, then of course having larger wings in order to carry the weight of the craft through the atmosphere is well, you know, it's something you can't really you can't really get around. Um, you can try to more more or less turn this vertically. It's kind of like this, and be able to do it. Maybe be able to do it like that. But of course, um, if you if you have an SSTO that takes off of the runway, then you're going to need large wings in order to have enough surface surface area to pick up that heavy sucker off the ground. And a lot of the parts that are inside of Kerbal Space Program, of course. Kind of like these, the liquid fuel fuselages and stuff like that, Mark III and uh, Mark IIs, they are considered lifting bodies. They create their own lift, so they will they will also help with this whole um, trying to get the heavy weight off the ground. But if you can minimize your wing space, then that's what you want to do. Now, this amount of wing space or uh, surface area would be way too much for such a light craft it would actually hinder the craft as it goes through the atmosphere. It would create a tremendous amount of drag, which would, of course, uh, keep the craft from going faster, making it use more fuel, you know, uh, infect affecting its overall distance uh, altogether. You know, do a series of tests. Let's see, let's say something more like this. It's a little bit sleeker, not a whole lot of uh, wing surface area, you notice that it, it kind of helps with the whole puncturing through the atmosphere. It kind of looks like a knife or a bullet or whatever, which is pretty cool. It'll work. Something more like this, however, is kind of better. It's much, much better because of the fact that you have even less amount of wing surface, but it's smaller and it acts like a more like an arrowhead through the um, like shooting an arrow through the atmosphere. It's a lot. It can cut through the atmosphere a lot better. But you can even take it a step further and do something more like this. Now, a lot of a lot of you're looking at this like, wow, oh, that looks a little like uh, maybe it might fall out of the sky like a flying brick. Well, at fast enough speeds, this would be sufficient amount of lift for this craft. So you, if you were falling back to Kerbin in this case. Um, you'd be able to use these wings as a as a means of steering the craft towards a, a landing or a base or a landing runway or whatever the case may be. This would be enough. This would be enough. So we got the gist of what drag is, but now we need to look at fuel management. What is fuel management? Well, when you're talking about an SSTO, SSTOs use both liquid fuel at times and then liquid fuel and oxidizer at times so you have to know how much liquid fuel you need in order to get up there and then how much liquid fuel and oxidizer you need to finish off your orbit in this case we're only using one tank so if we uh, right click it we can see that it has liquid fuel and oxidizer well we already know that it's not going to need oxidizer and liquid fuel for a rocket engine right off the bat it's going to go into its air breathing mode in which case it's only going to use liquid fuel so if we went ahead and we we flew this thing you'd see the liquid fuel go down and down and down and down and down and down and down before finally it would kick into its rocket mode in which case not only would the liquid fuel start disappearing, but then finally the oxidizer would disappear. By the time it got into orbit or ran out of fuel altogether, there'd be about that much oxidizer left. This is considered dead weight. This would be considered poor fuel management because now you're lugging around a whole bunch of oxidizer, which adds weight to the craft, which is probably why you ran out of fuel in orbit in the first place. So the best way to combat this is to kind of at first guess. So I'm guessing that it's going to take at least one third of my liquid fuel from this tank 
in order to get into a high enough atmosphere to where my uh, air breathing engine will die and I'll finally switch over to rockets. So hopefully by the time it dies out, it'll go down, liquid fuel will go down, and then finally, boom, I'll click into, uh, I'll click, I'll switch into rocket mode, and then they'll go down equally all the way, which will help me save fuel because of the fact that I'm not carrying extra oxidizer that I'm not needing or won't need. So that's weight that I won't be carrying anymore, therefore more weight that I'm freeing up, I'm able to go further, and be able to make it into orbit with maybe about this much fuel left. So fuel management is a big player. You have to play around with it, figure out how much fuel it actually uses, and then tweak it as you go along with your testing. Now for the bread and butter of every single craft that's in KSP, is of course your three big ones, which is TWR, ISP, and Delta V. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to go ahead and kind of sort of in a way explain it but at the same time not and get not to get into super detailed depths which would take way more than um, way more time than what I have available right now so okay let's let's start with TWR so what is TWR well TWR stands for thrust to weight ratio basically the amount of thrust that you're generating compared to the weight of your craft now, for any SSTO to work properly, you want a high TWR or a very high thrust to weight ratio. You want your thrust to be extraordinarily high, well, as high as possible, compared to the weight of your craft. This will allow for your SSTO to literally skip out of the atmosphere as fast as possible in order to get into space and then use its rockets. Because you have to remember, rockets are gas guzzlers. So you want to try to save as much fuel for them as possible. Now for your for your jet engines, the TWRs that that some of these create aren't very good. Uh, obviously, Juno is a very small, very small uh, thrust. Even if you have a whole pack of them on either side, I've tried it. It doesn't really quite work. Plus, also as we all know, they do have a a height limiter that means at a certain height they actually die out no matter how many air intakes you have they will die out now I think that that might be that's controversial a lot of people are not agreeing with it while other people agree with it but for now that's the way the game mechanics are so some of these will die out too soon before they become any any use at all for an SSTO such as the Weasley and the Juno these two engines I've tried very hard. It's possible to make the Weasley work for you for an SSTO, but that's a whole nother can of worms that we don't have time to cover right now. Now the t three engines that will work are the Panther, the Whiplash, and of course the Rapier engine. So remember, if you have a low TWR or low thrust to weight ratio, then all you're doing is hurting yourself. Basically, if you throw on an engine that doesn't have a whole lot of strength because you think, oh, well, this is more fuel efficient or whatever the case may be. If it takes you a freaking hour to get through the atmosphere, all you're doing is drinking up more and more and more and more liquid fuel so that by the time you actually get to high enough speed, you've drank, you, you, <laughs> you've sucked up so much fuel that it's really not that fuel efficient whatsoever. What you want is an engine that's capable of getting you up and out of there as fast as possible. Now real quick, I know some of you are going to ask, well, what about this engine right here, the Goliath uh, turbofan engine? It is very powerful. It's got a lot of power to it. But the problem is, like I mentioned before, the game has height limiters. And this one is actually, um, uh, I'd say a little bit worse or maybe the same when it comes to... When it comes to the actual height that it can go to through the atmosphere before it starts to die out on you, it is around maybe ooh, 10,000 meters, probably a little bit more, give or take. So it's possible. Remember, this thing is real heavy, also. How heavy? Oh, <laughs> four tons. Hello. So even though it has, uh, go back, even though it has 360 thrust, yeah, uh, by the time you start reaching 10,000 meters, you start losing that thrust. That thrust starts to die out 
and when you reach its height or its limited height to where it can go before it completely dies out it's gonna become a lot of dead weight and when your rockets engage you will not have gained enough speed to actually get out there I'm not saying it's impossible but you're pretty much trying to turn an elephant into a race car so just a real quick quick recap TWR thrust weight ratio for a successful SSTO has to be high whole lot of thrust not so much weight and if you have it the other way around with a very low thrust and a whole lot of weight then you're just burning up fuel for no reason at all now ISP or specific impulse I really don't understand why they make it ISP even though it's specific impulse I think it has to deal with some sort of mathematical terminology but anyway Basically, in a nutshell, ISP is the gas mileage or fuel mileage an engine can get compared to, well, if you know anything about cars, like a little four-cylinder Ford Fiesta uh, in comparison to a Hummer, you know, V8. Which one's going to guzzle more fuel? Well, of course, the Hummer's going to guzzle more fuel. But which one's more powerful? Well, of course, the Hummer is more powerful. So it all depends on what you're looking for. For example, the ISP of a uh, atomic rocket motor is very high. Very, very high. That means it sips on fuel. Notice that, however, its um, thrust in vacuum is low. So in a, in a lot of ways, it's your four-cylinder in space. It, it gets great gas mileage. So in, a, in space, in vacuum, where there's no drag whatsoever on your craft, it would be perfect. It could take you all around the galaxy, or well, maybe not the galaxy, but the, the current solar system for sure. Now, one little thing about ISP that you have to remember is that compared to where you are in the atmosphere, will actually determine what kind of ISP or what kind of fuel mileage your engine is getting. It's a lot like a car going uphill. If the jet engine or the rocket engine is pushing against a very thick atmosphere, then your fuel mileage is going to be crap because of the fact that it's working really hard in order to push not only the weight of your craft through the thick atmosphere, but it's pushing also against the thick atmosphere itself. So technically your ISP would be real low. Notice, like I uh, mentioned or, or showed you before, the ISP in atmosphere for the atomic rocket motor was very low in atmosphere. And that's because of the simple fact that it has to work even harder or burn more fuel in order to push your craft through a thick atmosphere. But once it's in space with no drag whatsoever, then yeah, it's perfection. It's great. So now let's talk about Delta V. What is delta V? Well, delta V is the amount of speed that you can squeeze out of your spacecraft in total. Depending on the amount of delta V that you have in your spacecraft will depend on how far your spacecraft can travel before it runs out of fuel. Now, below here I have a mod called Kerbal in I almost said Kerbal Space Engineer, Kerbal Engineer Redux which reads out all of the mathematical things. It does all the math pretty much for your Delta V, your uh, TWR, uh, everything. It's really cool. Um, uh, uh, hopefully, I think they're going to put it in. They're going to put it in KSP for stock one of these days, hopefully. But it does all the math for you, except for, and I don't know why, just the air breathing engines do not calculate. For some reason, it does not calculate the air breathing engines. This includes the rapier engine. Close cycle. Nope. Still not getting anything. All right, well, anyway, basically, delta V is dependent on the ISP of your engine. For example, the vector engine has like a thousand thrust, but its ISP is real crappy. If you notice on the bottom, if I was to use this engine in space, I'd only get 1,651 meters per second more speed than I already have being in orbit this is that's okay that's all right um, it's definitely it would get you up there quickly because it's a lot of thrust but let's say we throw on an arrow spike which only has like hundred and sixty or so or 180 it's uh, look at that look at that the Delta V has increased dramatically I get 3,000 ms that means I can go 3,000 meters per second faster with this engine 
that's how much delta v i have that's how, that's how fast i can go which is great this has enough thrust uh twr and its isp is pretty good to give me enough good gas mileage to give to get me up to speed to about 3000 now let's say i want some more speed well i throw on one of these little guys which the thrust on this engine is very small it's um 60 and but it's lightweight it's 60 it has good 345 uh, ISP in vacuum, so it sips on fuel. It has little thrust, but it's very lightweight. So the TWR is low, but the ISP is high, which allows me to get more thrust in vacuum because I'm not pushing against an atmosphere. So I'm, I'm getting more bang for my buck. So you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, Delta V is the amount of speed that you can squeeze out of your spacecraft. What use is that for me? Well, when you're calculating where you want to go in the solar system, to the moon or to another planet, it's calculated in Delta V, how much speed you need to get up to in order to leave Kerbin's uh, gravity and move forwards into space. So to get to the moon is something like 850 delta V. So if you have a rocket and enough fuel to reach 850 meters per second more, then you can reach the moon. If you have, you want to go to Duna, I believe it's something like a thousand plus delta V. I'd have to look at the map here, but you could, you need an engine and a uh, amount of fuel that has enough delta V or meters per second you can squeeze out of your spacecraft in order to reach that planet. Now, there is a catch to Delta V. There is a catch. Delta V is very dependent on ISP and of course TWR, which of course kind of boils down to what I like to call burn time. So what is burn time? Well, burn time is the amount of time spent with your rocket engine on doing a maneuver. So while Delta V may be, may be great, you might have the best Delta V in the whole galaxy. Um, if it takes you two million years in burn time to make a single maneuver, then that Delta V isn't actually the best in the world. For example, this fuel tank with the aerospike gives me about 3000 meters per second more than a uh, speed that I can squeeze out of this craft. But if I was to switch it over to the atomic rocket motor with all fuel tank engine, uh, fuel tank, uh, liquid fuel tank, excuse me, liquid fuel tank tanks, bleh, uh, it gives me 4,800 meters per second that I can squeeze out of here. And with the amount of thrust that the atomic rocket motor gives, the burn time would be longer than, let's say, if I use the aerospike engine, but it'd be relatively it'd be relatively all right. It'd be um, convenient. Uh, wouldn't be that long of a burn time, which it's, which helps a lot, especially in gameplay. But let's say I want to go for the max, the super duper max amount of Delta V that I can grab. Well, I'll grab this Xenion container, slap on an iron engine, and voila, suddenly I have 10,000 meters per second. And you're like, whoa, this thing is screaming through space. But there's a catch. This would probably take several orbits before I could finally get enough thrust to actually go anywhere, which would mean probably a couple of days of burn time. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. Basically, it would take you so long to make a burn maneuver that you'd either miss your window of opportunity altogether or you would collapse from boredom or maybe you'd grow a beard or get married and by the time you came back to your computer you'd be like oh crap what's this game again i, f I forgot <laughs> the practicality of having an ion engine with this kind of weight even though the delta v is massive would mean that the thrust to weight ratio of this piece right here would be so low, so incredibly low, that your burn time would be so incredibly long. One would have to wonder, is it even worth it? Is it practical? And for me personally, there's some, out, there's some people out there who would take the time to make it happen, but for me personally, 
is, it would be very, very impractical. So I'd be using something more like this. But if you're building an SSTO, the burn time that you need in order to get into space, you actually have a, a limited amount of time that you have to burn. You cannot take forever when you're burning into orbit because of the simple fact that not only are you going up into space, but eventually you're going to come back down to Kerbin. So you need to make orbit within a certain amount of time. And, but the Delta V says, oh, the Delta V is incredible. I can go everywhere and anything, do anything. The problem is, is if you take too long making that burn, if you take too long, if that burn time is too long, eventually you'll reach apoapsis and start falling back down. So when you're making an when you're making an SSTO, burn time is critical. Make sure that the thrust to weight ratio is strong enough to get you into orbit sooner rather than later.